Natural bodybuilding is a really contentious space within the fitness industry. This is for multiple reasons, but I think the most collectively agreed upon opinion is that most people in natural bodybuilding are competing with unnatural people, even if they don't know it. You see these natural bodybuilders are getting on stage after months and months and months of hard work, sometimes obviously years, and then competing with someone who could be taking some form of a pharmaceutical and enhancing their progress exceptionally faster than that person who was natural and fully committed to that lifestyle for so long. The really great instance of what I'm saying here is the hall of shame on the natural bodybuilding page. You can see all of the competitors who had competed at some of the highest levels in natural bodybuilding fail and get their records revoked due to testing positive on several or one drug test or coming out that they had taken drugs on social media. And again, these people have competed more than once, sometimes many times, dozens of times in fact. This isn't to say that all natural bodybuilders are taking drugs because there is tons of them who have done amazing without any kind of performance enhancing compounds. However, there is a really hard issue at hand, which is detecting whether someone is taking drugs or they're just really genetically gifted. Oh, hi guys. Because as I've said before, genetics plays such a large role when it comes to your physique. We can push training and diet intake aside and literally just look at genetics as a primary factor in giving someone a God-blessed physique. It's really hard to tell because genetics do play such a large role. And when you compare that to someone who's been taking anabolics, one could really easily seem to be someone who is genetically gifted compared to someone who's just taken drugs to get the physique that they have. And the trickier thing is that the person person who has exceptional genetics to be a bodybuilder and build an amazing physique is maybe literally one out of 100 compared to a guy that has decent genetics which you or i would look at and be like damn dude you got a sick physique which is maybe somewhere around 25 out of 100 so you don't get to see these genetically gifted athletes very often and when you do it's sort of a shocking thing to see someone so damn impressive but yet completely natural and the thing of the matter is is that you've compared them to those top 25 out of 100 physiques that have been decent and now you're seeing this top one physique and it's unbelievable because literally by your measuring stick that physique is exceptionally better like magnitudes better than the physique that you had been measuring good off of but in the other hand it could just be drugs it could just be that that person is taking drugs and they don't just have exceptional genetics now don't get me wrong i'm not saying that there are people who are so genetically gifted that they look like bodybuilders without any drugs. I'm talking about people who are obviously using steroids claiming natural like Simeon Panda for example. You know, exper um, share my knowledge, share my experience. Then you get people that just troll. That's this gentleman here. So what I'm not going to do is give him the opportunity to, you know, clickbait, get a video. And I will be on his video. This is what he was showing his video. Whereas I will show you exercise and nutrition and try to help. This guy is a troll and that's what he does. So today, unfortunately, we can't have you, you know, spoil what is a good opportunity for me to communicate with everyone. I don't even want to hear anything you want to say. You don't provide any good content to the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. But I do think it becomes a very big problem and one of heavy debate with people who don't look super enhanced, but look a little bit questionable. Natalie H is a three times world champion in natural bodybuilding. She's very clearly successful as it's only taken her three years to achieve this status. Furthermore, people debate a lot if she is natural or not. She's been the topic of many different videos on Instagram and YouTube just from simply posting reels of her flexing. And a lot of that discussion is based around her physical features, obviously her hypermuscularity being one of those things, but more so we're looking at her acne and the other debate is kind of how long she's actually been training to achieve the physique that she has. She also has a little bit of abnormal hair growth. You can see this in some of her videos on her arms, and that is certainly something to be looking at. I've talked about all of these things before in previous videos being secondary male characteristics that females can develop when exposing themselves to male hormones such as anabolic androgenic steroids. But there's actually many conditions that will lead a female to express these secondary male characteristics without any form of exogenous hormone going into her body. They begin to to express some form of masculinity, and I believe that's actually what we're seeing in this female. But again, I can very clearly see why people can say that she is not natural. She expresses a lot of the artifacts that would consider someone to be enhanced. But I do want to propose a different opinion. I do do those on occasion right now. I don't. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. You
In this study, we can see that most successful female athletes have some form of PCOS, or at least the propensity for a female to be a highly successful, competitive, and physical-based athlete is pretty correlated to her having PCOS. This is because polycystic ovarian syndrome increases the endogenous amount of male hormones in a female body, i.e. testosterone. This can cause adverse side effects, such as the one we're seeing in Natalie, but it can also improve physical performance quite a substantial amount. Women with PCOS have generally higher bone mineral density, higher body mass indexes, and leaner fat mass, which means just more muscle, and a larger degree of physical output. But they also have a large degree of side effects from male secondary characteristics ranging from male pattern baldness, oily skin, acne development, hair growth, or what we call heroism in clinical data, and even infertility in some of the worst cases. It's actually quite a horrible syndrome that needs to be looked at more by the medical establishment and simply just doesn't get much attention towards because why would it? It's a female thing that generally doesn't impair their life. It just makes their quality of life a little bit less better. And so who's really going to pay attention to that and dedicate millions of dollars into some treatment? Yet women have found this to be an extremely viable tool when it comes to physical sports because they have endogenously an absorbent amount of testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and other androgens, such as like androstenedione dione and other ones, that they can get a little bit of a performance boost, right? Which leads me to believe that Natalie is likely natural. And as well, she could also have other forms of hormonal disorders that she just simply hasn't treated yet, which is another really common happening with females within their younger 20s. And this isn't me saying that she isn't using steroids because she very well could be. However, I would postulate that she's probably not taking steroids because as we've covered with other females who take steroids on this channel, many females actually don't get that much acne, especially if they're enhancing properly. What they do start to experience though is really larger physiques and we're not necessarily seeing that in Natalie. We are seeing acne, we are seeing hair growth, but her physique is, while impressive and certainly more than most women could achieve, not much bigger than what most women could achieve. She does have a leaner body mass index, which is a key indication that PCOS might be present, but she's not like a massive female bodybuilder. She's not even as big as most bikini competitors these days. And so I think people really like to extrapolate or embellish the situation because she looks better than them or even she could be leaner than the average female. But what we're seeing here is just someone that has a pretty damn good work ethic, someone that has likely PCOS and someone who has been doing this long enough to dedicate herself entirely to it. And therefore she's getting better results than the majority of people. And on top of this, she could be very genetically gifted to do the sport that she's in. And I'll add one last thing here. She has made an impressive three-year transformation, which you can see on her Instagram. She posts from one year being the first year that she started to the third year, which is where she's currently at. And it is pretty absurd. But when you look at this picture or these pictures, you can easily tell that from the very first picture she posted to the very last, the only difference critically is really her body fat. She lost a lot of body fat and then developed an amazing physique that was much leaner. She probably built some muscle over time, but if you were to just strip the fat off of the first physique, it would probably look a lot like the last physique. And a lot of that muscle was probably already there. So I know it's really easy for people to besmirch a lot of other individuals' hard work because they're simply better than them. But a lot of the times, they're just better than you. And it's not because they train harder. It's not because they're doing something different. It's not because they're taking some form of a magic pill. Oftentimes, it's just because they're genetically gifted. And that sucks. If you're born short, you stay short. If you're born tall, you stay tall. And it is just how life tends to work. If you like this video, subscribe. It does me massive favors. Honestly, I don't even think you can understand how important this stuff really is for a YouTube channel to grow, and it would help me tremendously. It's free to you, and it literally takes 0.5 seconds. I'll see you in the next video.